another nice Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Hmm. I am waiting for Facebook to tell us what they're going to do. So it's another night. Hello, Pachi. How are you? Thanks for coming. Let's give them a minute or two so they can, they can join there. And it's good you're on time. I'm so happy because <laughs> I... I'm so happy that you're on time tonight because we're going to talk about something to do with time and the value of time and stuff like that and stress and anxiety and all those things. So let's see how far we can go. Thank you for telling me to bring it. I hope you enjoy it. You know, you can send me a question. So you can always ask me a question and I'll pick it up and I'll answer it in real time. So let's just give them a couple. Nobody they say to give them a minute. We are letting you come down what followers know according to Instagram you know how they are so anyway I think we give them enough time don't you I like to dance with the music when the music begins I don't like being late so tonight I'm going to talk about the value of time it's going to be different because I'll bring in stress I'll bring in anxiety and I'll bring in fear so these are the two three things but time is going to be the major topic so I'm happy that you are here, and I because I know for you, time must be really important with your child, your daughter, getting her to where she has to go, getting yourself ready. I had to do that. So time. Time is something that is not renewable. Yes, yes, you are British Neil. We still have time. Oh, this on time. I am. Time is not a renewable resource. No, you cannot get it again. You cannot pick it up. You cannot borrow it from your friend and then give it back when you have when you get it, when you get yours. Time passes only once. And time is something that is very, very, very critical. Because the time you lose, once you lose that time, it's impossible for you to get it back. It, it, it's not even lose. Time is on its own schedule. Time does not wait. They, there's a saying that they say the tide which goes in and out in the ocean or the sea. And time does not wait for anybody. When it's time for the tide to go in, it goes in. When it's time for the tide to come out, it goes out. And that is how it works. None of them give you a chance to come and say, wait for me, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Time does not know time. As much as time knows time, it does not give it to you. It's on time. So when you have time, like you have the planning to do something, you're saying, you know what? I need to get this done. I will be there at this time. I'm going to be here at this time. I'm going to finish it today. That's the time. You said today by 11, I'll be working on that. That's the time. And that is why we send out messages of energy. When we send out messages and we say, I will be doing a live at seven and I show up at five after seven, the energy that I had already called to help me has left. The energies of the world that has come in, all these systems that was going to work, they were like cogs in a wheel, and they had parts and they fit together. So as soon as I am, they're waiting for me, I am part of that wheel. I'm part of the cogs, I'm part of the spoke in the bike. If it needs 20 and there is 18, it's not going to work as well. So if I said I'll be here at 7, and I show up at 5 after 7, I have left them waiting, and the cogs are out of work. Everything goes crazy. Because time does not wait for us. Time has a, a, a way of passing through. It's like a, a train that's going. It will, it's there for you. You can get on it on time, but you cannot get on it before time, and you cannot certainly can't get on it after time. If you can sit and wait for time to come and meet you, it's okay. Because time will pass and you can get on and you can go with time. But if you come and the time has passed, there is no way you're going to catch that time and you cannot bring it back. So you throw your life and the lives that of the people around you out of whack. Time is beautiful. Time gives you speed. Time tells you when you should be there and when you shouldn't be there. But the worst time that you can fool around with is the one you speak out with your tongue. This is why they tell you there is life and there is death in the tongue. When you say, I'll be there at a certain time, you have to show up. 
Because 10 minutes later, the energies of the world is no longer yours. It's for somebody else. And you find yourself in a trap, in a situation where this time doesn't belong to you. It's like being in a time zone. It's like staying in the 21st century and going back to the 16th century. We, we wouldn't make it. We couldn't live in that lifestyle. We wouldn't want to have dresses that are overflowing and, and working and pulling buckets out of water. No, that is not our time. Our time is the present. And this is why I always stress to be on time. You, it's magical time. A long time ago, somebody told me that, it was an older lady, and she said, time does not wait for you. Time connects with you and the angels and all your helpers, even your ancestors that have passed by, she said. They heard you. And they said, you are going, you said, I am going to do this today at this time. So you need help. You cannot always function in the world without help. So time, once you, hi Rosie, once you say, I am going to be here with that time, that time is going to be ready for you. The ancestors, the people that, are actually, she said to me, even the people of your family that passed on, they are there to help you. She said, as much as you cannot see them, they're there. So the minute you say, I am going to do this, you have to go do this. And that is what you have to remember. So that is one of the things we always have to say. Do that. Get your time in. Because no, time, let's put time at the end of a sentence. And at the beginning of the sentence, so time is over here, we're going to put stress plus anxiety. Then we have fear. And that really kills time. So Time is more important because although time is the last thing I'm showing you, if you are late, let's say we move time to the beginning of the sentence. Time equals stress, equals anxiety, equals fear. And when you put those three together, they're combustible. They ignite. They get, they get into, they get, they, they, they're like fire. They catch fire. Because stress if you are stressed because you were late right so time i am late i am stressed oh my god like you're in alice in wonderland i cannot get there i'm not getting there anxiety you start to hyperventilate because you don't know what is going to happen when you do get there right so you're stressful and stress will make you dizzy it will cause you to have headaches it will get you your digestion will go the more stress you have the more physical things you have Anxiety and stress are not the same. A lot of people put those two together. They are not the same. Stress is where you just cannot keep it up. Every little thing irritates you. Stress is something, hi Nikki, stress is something that every little thing that happens irritates you. That is what stress does to you. And then when you take stress and you put it next to anxiety, which is, I don't know what's going to happen. I applied for this mortgage. I cannot get this mortgage. I call this man. He's not returning my call. And you, and you, you are worried. And you start to hyper. That is anxiety. Now, the stress can be good stress and happy stress. Stress is natural. It's a change. Anytime we have a change, we develop stress. It could be, I'm moving to a new house, I'm so happy, you're stressful, I'm stressful. Or, this is coming and I'm stressful, I don't know what's going to happen, it's going to be a winter storm, I have to get home, I'm driving this car, and I'm so stressful. So you have stress that way. And then you have anxiety, which you don't know the outcome. You have no idea what's going to happen, and that causes anxiety. And that's where you start to hyperventilate. So when you have two people in a road rage, they always tell you one is stressful and one is suffering from anxiety. And when they two get together, they combust. They become a raging flame. And that's why they call it road rage. They just combust. They, and, they, and they both of them now end up losing time. They get fearful. Things are getting worse because they look sometimes they're on their way home and they get into this argument on the highway. And at the same time, they're both already in a position of stress. And this is what happens all the time. If you are late, you're forcing yourself to be stressful. It's better to be 15 minutes earlier than, than five minutes late. Because time does not, you cannot renew, renew, it's not oil, it's not gas. It's not a renewable resource. Once it's gone, it's gone. 
Yesterday was the 2nd of March, today is the 3rd. We cannot have another 2nd of March 2021. So what we did not accomplish yesterday, we are not going to accomplish it today. Not in the time. That is why when you have to be somewhere, you must be there on time. The time does not wait for you. It's a train. If you have time and you are late, you're going to be stressful because I am late. You're going for to meet somebody. You're going to do something and you are late. You're going to be stressful. When standing on top of that, no, if it's something you're going to do and you don't know the outcome, if it's a job or if it's an interview at a bank for a loan for your business or something and you're late and you get there and your papers and because you're late, everything, it just works like that. Once time is gone, everything just works really crazy. And that is what you have to remember. So if you're sitting here and you're looking at your time and you're late, although you took the patience and you pack all your documents for your loan, for your business in, the, in there or whatever you're going to do at the bank and you put it all together, your appointment is at two and you're rushing and you get there at seven minutes past two, five minutes past two. Don't tell me you're not rushed. You're hot. You're walking and you're all hot and you're feeling the heat. And you go in, you sit down, and then all of a sudden, you don't even know where you have the documents that they asked you for. So the person now is waiting for you patiently, and that is causing more stress. Then, because you're very stressful, you develop, I don't know, no, look at the mess I'm doing. Maybe they're not going to give me my loan. So anxiety comes in. So they are not the same, right? Stress is because you lost time. Stress is because of the change. You realize something is changing. You don't like change, so you get stressful. You might like change, and you still get stressful. And that is where you develop that flight, fight or flight attitude. So this is what you have to look at. If you have to be somewhere at, at, at a certain time, it's best you get there and sit and wait and walk in at the appropriate five minutes to the appropriate time. This thing of we taking time and using it as if it, we don't care, we just show up. It only affects you when it has money attached to it. When it has money attached to it, that is when we feel the pain of being late. It, there is no, no, no kind of honor in being late. You lose the energy that you set up for yourself, for the world. You lose the energy of the helpers that's coming to see your life through. All, all your ancestors that pass, they're always there. They don't go anywhere. When you say, I'm coming, they come. When you tell the angels or the God you're coming, they come. Everything has energy. It's like, as I said, it's like a wheel with different parts, the cogs. And you are one of them and you're not there. That wheel is not going to move. So guess what happens? Everybody disperse. You get there and now you're stressful, you're frightened, you're afraid. And because you don't know, now I'm late, I cannot find the documents, I thought, I, and the document might be right there in your hand. But because you are late and you're stressful, you cannot see the document. And that is what happens. And you, and you who, who wants to help or is supposed to listen to this interview is sitting there and that is annoying them. So you really don't know how to sit. You cannot speak because that gets the person more and more, more aggravated. So your quietness stresses them. Your noise dress stresses them. Talking stresses them. Your only other choice is to say, excuse me, I have to go get something in another office. I'll be back. I will give you some time to find it. If you have that wisdom and that common sense, if you are the person that that person has come to see and you notice they're so late or, and they're so messed up and every, and, and they might come and because they're rushing, they left the briefcase in the car with the documents. So they have to run again. That is why being late has absolutely no merit. Being late is actually keeping you from making money. I don't care whether you're self-employed, an entrepreneur, if you have 300 people waiting for a course and you come to do that course and you come in five minutes late, tell me, isn't there one person there that's going to start fidgeting and you know the style? When one person starts to fidget, the whole room, and where are they? It's late, I paid my money. I've been sitting here for so long. So you have to practice it in the small things that you do. If you say you're going to come here at 6.30, then show up at 6.30. I had to do a live with somebody and a few weeks ago and she came late. She came so late <laughs> and telling me, I'm so sorry I'm late. And I'm thinking, really? 
you invited me and you're so sorry I'm late. You're late. I said, okay. But the point is that she lost her momentum. She spent 10 minutes telling me why she was late. It didn't matter to me. To be honest with you, if you want to be practical in business, you shouldn't even care. So telling me that made it worse because I had to sit there quietly while she tried to explain to me why she was late. That is not how you do it. You should never be that late that you have to make excuses for being that late. If somebody has paid the money and you all, everybody wants to make money, you want to be this entrepreneur. If somebody has paid the money to do something or you want to be self-employed, you have your own business, you're meeting somebody for an appointment and you are rushing, and while you're rushing, something falls. You have to pick it up. You're all flustered. Your face is red. Come on. Am I going to do business with you? I had somebody working for me like this. And he was perpetually late. He was always late. And every time, there were clients waiting for him. So one day, when he came to work, I said to him, you know what? It makes no point. Why do you bother coming? You're always late. You make appointments for nine and you show up for five after nine and you're laughing like you're early. I said, number one, that is disrespectful. It's disrespectful for the person you made the appointment with. And then he was quite upset when the man wouldn't give him his, a $2 million investment. And I'm saying to him, if you think I would give you my money to invest if you cannot get there in time to take it to, so that you can make money off it? You come strolling in and your hand in your pocket and your customer is sitting in your office waiting for you and you expect that person to give you the money instead of telling me I really messed up. Oh, I just think he didn't like me. I, I, I am good. In, I was good. at. I said, no, you're not good enough because you didn't show up on time. So he got stressed. He didn't make his two numbers. That was going to put him over the top. And it just became like a, a rolling stone and everything went backwards for him. He did not make his mom numbers that, that, that term. For the four months of the quarter, he did not make his money. Because he lost that $2 million deal and nobody could give it back to him. The man did invest, but he invested it if another person who was there, who was willing to do it. Because this is a businessman. He had his business. He had to be somewhere else. And he couldn't stay to wait. So he said to me, do you have somebody that can take the deal? I said, sure. I gave him somebody who took the deal. This one is coming strolling and showing me his teeth as if he was early. So I didn't help. I just said, no, you're going to have to deal with that yourself. So time will, will cost you money. Time will cost you your health. Because if you get stressed, you're going to be sick. You have digestion. You have indigestion. You have headaches. You're, you're, you're fatty. You're, you don't know which way to turn. And then anxiety comes up. And when these two get together, they can bust. And that's where you get afraid. Every day you get up, you're afraid. I don't know if I'm going to do this. I don't know whether I can do this. You're constantly asking yourself if I can. Because you're afraid. You, will, you, you had time. Time, you didn't keep your time. It caused stress. Stress rolled into... I don't know if I'll get this. I don't know if I'll get the loan. I don't know if I'll get the customer. I don't know. I don't know. And you, because you are concerned about the unknown, it creates anxiety. So stress and anxiety are not the same. Anxiety is normal to our body. Um, stress is normal to our body because we don't like change. And even if we like the change we're doing, we still get a certain amount of stress about it. Pushing yourself too far will give you stress. You need downtime. You need time to relax. You need time to believe and take time off for you to relax. Anxiety is where you are and you're so, and I don't know what to do. I might don't know if, and you're wringing your hand because you don't know the outcome of the situation. So when you put those two together, you get, at the other end, you get fear. Fear is a crippler. Fear will cost you. Yoko said, time will cost you money. That's so true. Of course it's true. Because time cannot wait. Time is in a big hurry. And if you have any question, you can pass it on to me to answer because if you don't have the time to do what you have to do, you will lose. You will always lose. And that is one of the things people don't understand. Time has no interest in waiting for you. Time doesn't care because time has to go. It's 2 o'clock and you come at 2.10. Too bad. It's not 2.10 anymore. So there starts all this thing that you're costing yourself angry and money. 
and you lose, you always lose because time does not have a reverse gear. Time doesn't even have a break. Time just keeps going and it's only you have to be there to catch it. If you are there, you will catch it. If you're not there, it will be gone. And you show up, you're still not going to get time. So these are the things we have to look at. Time causes stress when you're not on time. Stress blows into anxiety because you don't know the outcome of what you want to do. It causes fear. Fear stops you from functioning and you freeze in place. You get sick, you get headaches, you get diarrhea, you get just name it, you have it. All because you did not keep time. And that is one of those things I ask people to remember on a time. If the time is not good for you, say that time does not suit me and make sure you get the time that suits you best. And this is what we have to do. So I hope, do, Yoko, you stayed. The other ladies jumped off. Time was, they had somewhere to go. So they took the time to take off. But it was really nice to do, to do that. So do you have anything you want to say? You can put it in the question. There's a question box. You know that, right? I know you know that. So that is all for tonight. And I hope you enjoyed this. Because I just wanted to bring this time thing because I saw it flying away today with somebody else and I realized it was important for us not to be late when we have things to do. And so, my, hello, how are you? And oh, we're just talking about time and the importance of time, magical battle, um, and how great time was because actually I was late for your life, I know. But that is not, that you had a special thing happening today. The, only, the, the reason why I discuss time is because I'm looking at time is the beginning of the sentence. When you are late, you lose the time, you lose the help, you lose the energy, you lose the will. Nothing is like the cog, you're lost. One cog has fallen off and you're coming in and you are not there. So it's not working. You're late. Stress. Then when you're getting, when you're stressed, you get all this combuckle. Things are falling. You, you go to a meeting as an entrepreneur to get money. You're showing up at the bank and you're late. And or you or you were rushing and then you left you because you were late, you left your briefcase in the car. The person who has to attend to is waiting, you're five minutes late. And you might say it's only five minutes late, but five minutes late is money. Time is a non-renewable resource. We cannot get it back. So sitting in the bank waiting for you, you come in, you're flustered. So because you're flustered and you're applying for a loan to open your business, you're planning for a loan to expand your business, you took the time, you work on this business plan, you come to me and I'm trying my best to help you. You are late and you come flying in, you come in and you, and I'm so late I, and the traffic, that is none of my business. I don't care. I cannot care because in 25 minutes from now, I have another client to see. I need you out of my office. So you are telling me, oh, I forgot my briefcase with the documents in the car and marching back to the car to find it. It's not helping me. And it most certainly isn't helping you. So this is what I try to tell people time. If you're having a live with somebody, be there. Get there and wait. It doesn't cost you anything. That person is coming to help you. So at the bank, when that person comes, that being late causes them to be stressful. They, things are going there. Then all of a sudden, because of the whole mess, they might give me the wrong document. They might perhaps, they're so stressful, they do something, and then, oh, oh, anxiety sets in. Because no, anxiety comes from when you don't know the result. So I am waiting for this loan, you want this loan, and you're waiting for it, but you gave me such messed up papers, there is no results yet. And that gives you anxiety. You don't know. Anxiety is caused because you don't know the outcome of what you're expecting. Somebody used to phone you, they don't phone you, you get anxiety. Something is changing, you get stress. And when you take being late equals stress, equal anxiety, equals fear. So you stop. You didn't get the loan because your documents were not right. You didn't take the time to do it. And now you are, you are afraid. You cannot do this. I have this business. I can get this contract. I need to expand my business. And I am late. So time, when, you are, when you're running a business, because I have done it. I had my own business. When you are running a business, time is your most important thing. You cannot be late. A business, you run it seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I started my ceramic business from my basement because I didn't want to go back to work full time with the government after my daughter was born. It got so big, I brought it to the storefront. 
When I did it there, the building was going up for sale. I decided I could buy the building. It had apartments upstairs. I had, there was no computers. I went to the library and I had about 14 books in my hand, how to make a business plan, because I knew I wanted to buy it. I worked on it diligently, diligently. And when I brought, and I had to type it on a typewriter. And when I brought the business plan to the bank, the man took it, he did his thing. And then he called me and he said, who did this business plan? I said, I did. He said, who taught you to do it? I said, I just got the books. I've been working on it for four months because I knew I was coming to get the loan from you. And he looked at me and he smiled. He said, well, that's good. I wish you were working in the bank. I said, no, I'm self-employed now. So anyway, I got the money. We bought the building. My brothers gave some down payment, but I got the loan and we bought the building together. We still have the building, has two apartment buildings and a store below that's been rented. And I sold the business, the man moved it away when I didn't want to do it anymore. But everything was on time. I had to drop the children at school at nine. I got there at quarter to nine. As soon as it was time for them to go in, I did that. I got to the studio at 10. Before 10, I opened the door, I got ready and I'm waiting for people. And I was working on Sundays. I worked seven days a week. I would come home at 10 o'clock at night and if I had Christmas time and all these kilns going, I would get dressed and two, three in the morning, I'd pick up a girlfriend and we would go and load the kilns and empty the kilns. I worked, I didn't say I worked hard. I worked with a purpose. I worked specifically with time on my side. But I never worked hard because I loved what I was doing. And it was always on time. Everything was on time. I couldn't be I'm careless with the kiln. The kiln had to go on for 16 hours. So I had to make sure I did that. It's the same thing at the bank. I couldn't go and put the time on the bank and have the vault close and customer banging the door down to come in. So time is so important. And people don't understand that. Coming late, being tardy does not put food on the table. It puts absolutely no food on the table when you're late. It just does not do that. Eventually, you will lose. So people who want to start a business and they want to make it work, you have to put in proper time. It's not, you have to plan it. You cannot afford to sit in front of the TV. I do this IG Live, I, I had to watch TV. I do one at eight in the morning and I do this one at seven, but I work on it. I do my research, I think about it. I am up at five in the morning and I go until 10. Every day, seven days a week, I don't change the time I wake up because it's the weekend. Because the weekend doesn't mean I haven't got to function on Monday morning. My downtime is Saturday and Sunday, and now Yoka and I are going to do a self-care thing, and that's why we decided this. This self-care thing that we're doing is for you to realize you need downtime. But use it properly. You only have one house, and that's your body. And if you burn it, then what are you going to do? So time, if you make your time, I get up at five, no matter what, and I start my day at five. I go to bed for 10, Monday to Sunday, every day of the week. I don't sleep in because if I sleep in, I will get into the habit of not doing it. I read every day. I must read every day. I have seven books and I read from each of them, one, one of them a day. So there are things I do to, and people say, how do you do it? I'm never tired. I drink maybe 15 glasses of water. I eat everything in sight. I just, I never stop eating. I'm like a, a, a cow that's grazing constantly. But I, I am aware. I don't eat past six. Everything is time. I eat cakes and croissant and cheese and I drink wine if I feel like it. But I don't eat in front of the TV. I set the table to eat. My husband is dead and I'm eating. When the kids, are, the kids come to visit, then they, sit, they know that's what they're going to do. But every night and every morning, and when it's lunch and breakfast, I set a table to eat. That's the time. You have to honor time because time will honor you. But this thing that we're doing with our time, and we think we can be late, and we can walk in late, we can do things late, we can sleep in when we should be working. No. If you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to make money, and you want to have a better life in your olden days, you have to put in the time. It doesn't have to be hard. It has to be pleasant and on time. So anyway, this is what I wanted to talk tonight about, is the magic of time. 
Time is not a renewable resource. You don't get more of it once it's passed. And time, if you're late and you're never keeping time, you'll have stress. Stress will lead to anxiety because you know that the results of your tardiness is what it has caused. And then, of course, it makes you frightened. You're fearful. You don't want to try. You give up. And all of it came from one little root, the root of time. So, sending you light and joy on this wonderful Wednesday evening. I hope you guys enjoy that. So, tomorrow, Times Magic, Alberto and Yoko and Rosie uh, for coming tonight. But what did Evan say? If you have one, you talk as you have about 500. Well, guys, it felt like there was a thousand of you watching tonight. So, anyway, see you guys at 8 tomorrow morning for the morning blessing. And Thursday night, we'll have something on money. You know, that's my game. So, and we'll see. So, Friday night is Ask Me a Question night. And you can always ask me a question no matter what. And don't forget to check in with Yoko and I on Sunday morning at 9.30. You can stay in your bed and watch what we are going to offer you. You'll be so surprised to see because we are two women that believe in self-care. Bye-bye.